You would think, after the grooming gang scandal that has rocked this country for the last, oh, I'd say better part of a decade, uh, that it would be fairly easy to muster the political will to at least deport those convicted child rapists who have moved to this country and then decided that they would systematically abuse children. I think you could deport them into a long wooden box, but uh, to yeah. another country is a good start. At the very least, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Bring back hanging. But you, you would think that would be something that could be done, but apparently it's not. And so we're going to go for a quick retrospective as to what's happened. And then we're going to fi finish up hearing the arguments of the groomers themselves as to why they shouldn't be deported. Oh, no. <laughs> But before we begin, if you'd like to support <laughs> us, uh, you can go to lowseas.com and watch our latest Epochs episode about the greatest knight in Christendom, William Marshall. And I really want you to keep the life of the crusading knight, William Marshall, in mind. Because I think a lot of us really need to be asking ourselves, what would William Marshall do <laughs> in our position? I think you'd have some ideas. Anyway, let's begin in 2015. I'm going to jump around over the time period, but I'm going to stick to Rotherham and Rochdale here. Mm -hmm. But in 2015, a report from about the Rotherham Council uh, says that they covered up the systematic rape of children. Just, they knew, and they covered it up. Uh, a criminal investigation was launched that uh, found that Rotherham Council was not fit for purpose and still in denial, as in lying, about the rape of at least 1,400 young girls. Mm -hmm. At least, we don't know, we upper limit of that estimate um the investigators concluded the girls as young as 11 were left to be abused by mainly asian men between 1997 and 2013 probably still happening now by the way uh because the council staff and politicians feared being labeled racist that was the reason this was a consistent thing and i know there are going to be people saying no that can't be tr the case oh that's certainly the case yeah. pearl clutching middle class sympathies prevented like this problem from being even addressed Yes, indeed. Uh, the council also had a deep-rooted culture of sexism and bullying, where it would shoot the messenger and sought to force whistleblowers into silence or pay them off, apparently. If you can believe it. Inspectors also found the council went to some lengths to cover up information and the children of the town were still at risk of abuse. Amazing. Uh, the report said that the South Yorkshire police also failed in its role to protect the victims, turning a blind eye to their plight and in many cases holding them responsible. In one case, an officer told a victim, quote... Don't worry, you aren't the first girl to be raped by X, and you won't be the last. That's what a police officer said to a child. Great. The cabinet was all forced to resign in 2015, after this report came out. And it turned out that one of the councillors was just a rapist. Oh. Which shows you the kind of place that Rotherham is. We can get to the next one. Uh, a victim in the Rotherham... Well, alleged rapist. Sorry, don't, don't sue me or anything. <laughs> Uh, an alleged rapist in the uh, Rotherham grooming trial, uh, trial, which was, I can't remember what, it was 2014 or something this came out, uh, where she alleged she was raped by a town councillor. Uh, and it's not even clear which councillor she was accusing, but the Guardian thought it was a guy called Jangir Akhtar, a former de tra traditional British name, uh, former deputy leader of Rotherham Council and distant relative of three brothers who ran the grooming gang ring in Rotherham. Uh, who themselves were jailed for 10 to 35 years. Uh, he, of course, denies the rape. Of course he does. Uh, but anyway, so that's just Rotherham. And uh, you can see that in other places, like in Telford, where it was covered up, and of course, the people involved were paedophiles. Uh, they, the Telford, uh, three former lawmakers, as Breitbart tell us, uh, were uh, overseeing things like social services department during the rape gang epidemic, and mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of them have been exposed as actual paedophiles. Graham Bould was uh, convicted in 2001 for sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy in Telford. Uh, he was the chairman of Shropshire's Ca Shropshire County Council's Social Services Department for five years. Hmm. Uh, the same victim was also assaulted by an Anglican vicar and county councillor called Michael Keane, who sat on the police authority board. He was found guilty of this abuse in 2001. But anyway, so you can see the kinds of people who are involved and who have been covering this stuff up. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wonder about the Labour Party themselves, because apparently in 2008, Gordon Brown sent around a missive that Nazir Avzal uh, told the BBC uh, instructed the police not to investigate the grooming gangs. So they're like, right, okay. So you've got a bunch of paedophiles and paedophile enablers, and then the Labour Party as well say just... 
openly, openly downplaying or facilitating this. Uh, and so what happened next? Well, how about we gave the Rotherham Rapists, if we move over to Rotherham, say, uh, in 2019, these guys got half a million pounds in legal aid. The victims got almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So the uh, a Freedom of Information request revealed that it cost nearly about £470,000 for the legal defense of these rapists. And the survivors, uh, re one solicitor who represented 86 victims, uh, out of those, 70 had not received any compensation payout in 2019. Uh, some, uh, dozens of them, in fact, had received sums as low as £2,000. Why? Why would the system be so stacked in favour of the rapists and so against the victims? And of course, as we learned only a couple of months ago, uh, from Jane Senior, who was giving uh, testimony on a misconduct panel, Jane Senior ran uh, the Risky Business Youth Project between 1999 and 2011, which helped reveal the pattern uh, in, in the town that she saw children groomed, raped and tortured by groups of men for more than a decade. She was giving evidence uh, and found that the victims were told to shut up or else they'd be called racist. At one Jeez. meeting, she said she was told, I was going against the perpetrator's human rights. I was rocking the multicultural boat. I was being racist, according to the South Yorkshire police, to one victim of institutionalized rape. Yep. Um, accepting that child rape exists is apparently against multiculturalism. It's apparently a violation of their human rights. Oh, no. The human right to do what they were doing. Anyway, so in 2015, Labour uh, MP for Rotherham, Sarah Champion, kind of had to admit that this is going on really badly. And the only Labour MP, I think, who's mm -hmm. been even vaguely half decent on this issue. Yeah. Uh, in 2015, she was like, uh, it's looking really bad. And it looks, I mean, she called it a national disaster because it could be a million English girls have been raped by these uh, ethnic grooming gangs. And of course, this went down. It was almost silence, actually. No one cared. No one, nothing happened. Yeah. I remember the stark contrast between the reception of this possibly up to, as you say, a million English girls being raped, and the Me Too movement, which was a handful of celebrities facing inappropriate advances, debatably, in, as part of their career ladder to get yep. up to their billion-dollar careers. Right, One of those, for some reason, really struck the public consciousness, and the other was swept under the rug. It's really strange, isn't it? Really strange. Um, but uh, this, this was awful. You know, she... She, the, Sarah Champion was like, I nearly lost my mind after victims turned to her to help, for help, unable to trust the police or the local council. Well, I wonder why, since they were either involved or actively covering it up. But the thing is, in 2017, Sarah Champion wrote an article because this, this did kick off debate. And the, the left, the Labour Party were all saying, oh, well, I mean, rape's just something that happened. It's, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to these grooming gangs. And so Sarah Champion wrote and an article. Didn't you know British people rape too? In grooming gangs of... <laughs> like this yeah and sarah champion was forced to write an article saying no they're pakistani men you know unfortunately i mean we we have the names of the people convicted they're almost all pakistani men and so she wrote an article in the sun saying britain has a problem with pakistani british men raping white girls and jeremy corbyn was like right you're fired how dare you he said it was wrong to designate an entire community as the problem she didn't designate an entire community as the problem. She didn't say the women were the problem doing it. She didn't even say that all Pakistani men were doing it. She was saying that the composition of the grooming gangs was almost entirely made up of Pakistani men, which is factually accurate. But uh, Jeremy Corbyn decided to appoint Dawn Butler to her position as Shadow Minister for Women Inequalities. <laughs> Best and brightest. Uh, anyway, so but the thing is, after all of this, you see the way that the scales are weighted in favour of the abusers and the people covering it up and against the victims. Well, who are the real victims here? The real victims of the grooming gang scandal is the Muslim community itself. Of course. Let's watch. Um, you went from being known as just a terrorist, but now you're a terrorist and you're a groomer. We've seen the far-right marchers come into our town. We've seen our women, our sisters attacked. Every family in Rotherham has felt the impact of the grooming because they are now associated as anybody coming from Rotherham also being uh, linked to the grooming. It's changed the way that we've been treated since. Um, I worked as a taxi driver for eight years. Never had any problems. We were looked at differently um, whenever there was a terrorist attack. 
we were looked at differently. And when the J report came out, we were looked at completely differently after that. For the, for the young generation, they have to grow up in that kind of environment where they literally they belittle, it affects their self-esteem, it affects them at school, wherever they go, they are judged by others and what they read in the papers. The only people factually who knew what was going on was social services and the police, and they did nothing, whereas we've been the recipient of all the abuse. Because of the targeting the of the Rotherham community, uh, most families do fear that if they talk about grooming, if they talk about sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, that it will bring the attention back to them and to Rotherham. When everything kicked off, I was in Year 7 myself. I was a young Year 7, just come from primary school, and you can imagine the big stigma around being Asian and everything that was happening. Even though we were young, we completely understood. I've heard of many relationships where girls have been exploited horrifically. These girls need help, they need somewhere they can go to. If, let's say, the girls can come in here and express themselves and work on themselves, that's great, in a safe environment. If these girls don't even have confidence with other girls that are their similar age, what do you think happens when they go outside? Right, that's very interesting, isn't it? Because on well, one hand, yeah. you've got the man saying, only the police and social services knew about this. And on the other hand, you have the girl who was at school, so contemporary age, mm -hmm. to the girls being groomed, saying, well, we all heard the stories. And then you have the older woman saying, well, if we talk about it, then that brings negative attention to our community. So yeah, and the fact that she says, oh, if, they don't, if they're not confident, and what, what do you think happens when they go outside? Yeah, if you're a not confident teenager teenage child girl in you're this vulnerable. country then oh yeah you're just going to be raped or picked it's just what how is it. that modern britain right how is that you know the country for which our ancestors fought to drop the old phrase it's ridiculous it's awful because they're lying they they know that we they know that they know right they know that in the community this is happening and they're afraid to talk about it. So the, the lie that, no, only the police knew. No, you all knew because the women after you said, well, yeah, we know it's going on, but we don't want to draw attention because we're afraid of the blowback. It's like, well, maybe if you talked about it, it would stop happening mm -hmm. and there wouldn't be any blowback and people would applaud you mm -hmm. for outing the predators in your own community. Yeah. And then the, like the other girl at the end saying, well, you know, we all heard stories. It's like, yeah, okay, well, there we go. I've got no sympathy. You, you were effectively complicit in covering it up. It's disgusting. But anyway, so in 2012, right, and it's not, not like this hasn't been known for a long time, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, Keir Starmer was the director of public prosecutions, and he was like, wow, we've really screwed up here. We failed them, as in the Labour Party, the people involved, the Labour Council, because this is all Labour areas, mm -hmm. obviously. All the councillors involved, everyone's, the entire system has failed these girls. So, yeah, because mm -hmm. you're all afraid of being called racist. Yeah, yeah. You absolute moral cowards. Uh, and he started instituting a series of reforms. I should have actually looked to see if these had any effect or not. But anyway, let's let's just move over to Rochdale quickly. Mm -hmm. So, again, that was all Rotherham, right? That was all Rotherham. That's one town. This happened in more than 20 towns now, right? So in Rochdale, uh, one of the councillors was lying to the inquiry about child sex abuse in Rochdale. Uh, the bullish and opinionated uh, former leader of Rochdale Council lied to an inquiry about his knowledge of ch the child sex abuse scandal a panel has found. Richard Farnell decided he had to lie for some reason about this, uh, saying he was unaware of the sexual exploitation of boys at a residential school in the town, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he claimed that it was, you know, he refused to accept responsibility for this and blamed other people. Again, just like the previous video that we've seen. Mm -hmm. He was suspended from the Labour Party, of course. Couldn't suspend him from any other party, could they? Uh, so uh, more than 40 men uh, were implicated at abusing boys at various locations in Rochdale, uh, coming from as far away as Sheffield. Boys as young as eight being sexually targeted by men from all over the Midlands. It's very interesting, isn't Weird. it? Weird. And so anyway, one grooming gang out of many in April this year uh, was put on trial. Eight men accusing, accused of exploiting girls. Uh, but interestingly about this, they're only accused, they're accused of widespread sexual exploitation of only two girls. That's interesting. So it's like, it's presumably the only girls who are willing to come forward and well, the testify. Only, the ones who the prosecution thinks it can lay the most ironclad case against, you would like to think at least. Yes, but it's not going to be limited to merely these two girls. But anyway, this happened between 2002 and 2006, uh, when they were under 16, of course they were. Uh, 
The men, seven of whom are from Rochdale and one who comes from Blackpool, face a total of 84 charges, including rape and trafficking. The men did not enter pleas and were bailed ahead of the court, Crown Court hearing. Uh, they, Seven of them from Rochdale, one of them from Blackpool. Do you want to guess the names? Uh, John Smith. Um, Neville Longbottom. There was a Martin Rhodes, oh. actually. He's the chap from Blackpool. Mm -hmm. One Martin Rhodes. The other one is Ali Raza Hussein. Aftar Khan, Muhammad Iqbal, Muhammad Ghani, Insa Hussein, Ikla Youssef. All charged with terrible, terrible things. Uh, and one of the, the this is not the first round of offences that the Rochdale grooming gangs mm -hmm. have been convicted for. Uh, previously, they had a leader called Sabir Ahmed, who had been, he's currently in jail, I believe. Uh, if you can get to that, oh no, in fact, no, I think he served his jail time and now he's out. Oh, in fact. great. Yes, uh, this this chap, Sabir Ahmed, he was the leader of the Rochdale grooming gang, and he was employed by the council as a welfare officer. That is a welfare bloody hell. Yep. He uh, he apparently called it, forced his victims to call him daddy, uh, and was convicted of sexual assault of children. And for some reason, the police failed to tell the council that this was the case. So why would you not like look into that person's criminal record? Just generally anyone's criminal record. Mm -hmm. Does this person who we're going to employ as a welfare rights officer have a criminal record, perhaps of raping children? Don't we even have a sex offenders register? Apparently not anymore. Then, I, d I don't actually know whether this was before we had one. Right. Uh, okay. But the point is that you would see that this person has a criminal record for raping children. It's like, are we really going to put them on a, a, a a human a welfare rights position? Is that really what you would do? Is there no one better than this guy in all of Rochdale? Mm -hmm. But uh, but the the police have had to be like, well, it, you know, this this they cite serious multiple failures by the Greater Manchester Police. It's like, hmm, failures or cover up. Anyway, the uh, the report apparently looked into the alleged grooming of children in council homes, shisha bars, and by taxi drivers in Oldham, and found the authorities failed to protect some youngsters from sexual exploitation. Again, I don't think they failed. I think they're complicit at this point. But uh, anyway, in 2021, the leaders of the Rochdale grooming gang, uh, not, uh, not it's actually a different set of leaders of the Rochdale oh. grooming gang. Again, there's just so many, right? This is uh, Quarry Abdul Ralph and another chap called uh, Ad Adil Khan. But this particular one, uh, he was threatened with deportation. Mr. Abdul Ralph, mm -hmm. uh, the, the convicted Rochdale, Rochdale grooming gang leader, says he does not expect it to be deported for his crimes. It's weird, isn't it? I would have thought I would be hanged. Yeah. That's what I would oh, be worried about. Oh, he knows about. we're a soft touch. He does. He exactly knows, right? So he went to prison for, and he was... Um, serving a prison sentence for his offences, something like six years in prison. Uh, but he came out of prison and he was just living in the same town that he was convicted of raping a bunch of children in. Just, I mean, people were angry. The fury of victims, campaigners and local residents. Yeah, I can imagine. Don't know how he manages to get a coffee in the town centre these days. Yeah. Can you imagine, oh, you're the paedophile rapist. Get out. And anyway, uh, Speaking today, uh, for, for his first time back in Rochdale, this was last year, uh, he arrogantly admitted that he was surprised that there had been not any move to get him out of Britain. The Mail Online asked him if he was surprised he'd not been deported, and he was like, yes. And when asked if he expected to be deported, he was like, no, I don't think so. But no, of course he doesn't think so. Of course he doesn't think so. Yeah, he's a preacher, by the way. Oh, he's an oh even better. Preacher. Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, what a great guy. And when asked, well, why should you not be deported? He had an amazing response. Oh, and I mean amazing, generally, you will be in awe of the absolute scum this man is, right? So we get to the next one. He was asked, uh, he told a judge that he shouldn't be deported back to Pakistan because his son needs a role model. Yeah, his son needs a child rapist for a role model. Yeah, what kind of role are you modeling for him? I mean, I don't know how the judge has taken this, right? But, uh, but yeah, so they've been to the, the Adil Khan and Abdul Raif have been told they'll be sent back to Pakistan for the good of the British public, which, I mean, again, public hanging, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, what, what do I know? Um, so they, they were both convicted from this, went to jail, uh, and they're now out. Um, and just as a quick thing, right? So 
they they were predating on 12 year old girls as young as 12 uh khan got a 13 year old girl pregnant and uh, ralph uh, trafficked a 15 year old girl for sex these are just what they were convicted of right? yeah we well, have no idea <laughs> yeah. the stuff they were doing which they haven't been convicted of yeah uh, and police say that they groomed as many as 47 girls in their time uh, and since on release from jail in 2016 they've fought a long legal battle against deportation including mounting multiple legal challenges and appeals spanning several years on the grounds that deportation would interfere with their human rights oh no no one cares about the human rights of the victims in this. well the victims are largely airbrushed out of most of the reporting on this yes indeed uh, khan appeared at a final deportation hearing on wednesday to argue that he should not be deported where Judge Charlotte Welsh asked him how his son uh, uh, might be affected if he was deported from the UK. So aren't you asking if his son's affected by having a convicted paedophile as a father? Does that not matter? Apparently that doesn't matter in this community, as far as we can tell. Yeah, apparently that's not, like, morally questionable. <laughs> uh, Khan, uh, speaking through an interpreter, because apparently he doesn't speak very good English, uh, says... As you know, the father figure is very important in every culture in the world to be a role model for the child to tell him or her right from wrong. Right from wrong. Convicted child trafficking rapist mm -hmm. is going to teach someone right from wrong. The audacity, the absolute audacity of someone to say that. And now, after raping a bunch of children here, I shouldn't be deported because I need to be a good example to my kids. He also claimed he wasn't wanted by his family back in Pakistan because of his no notoriety in Britain. It would be bad for the business that they own. People Not, wouldn't come to their business. I mean, that gives me some respect for his local community yes, back in Pakistan. Absolutely. Clearly, this isn't very well liked in Pakistan, but it's just fine when it's done in Britain. Isn't that weird? Really makes you think. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this live book club from Patricia McCormick on the A Human Manifesto. And if you want to follow what else Harry's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at, at Harry Lotus Eater on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.